Hi, my name is Hugh Holbrook, and I'm excited to talk to you today about Ultra Ethernet. The Ultra Ethernet Consortium is a standards organization that formed with the goal of enhancing Ethernet for the needs of AI and HPC. We have more than 100 member companies and 1,000 participants collaborating on this, and we're now ready to release our 1.0 specification. Ethernet has enjoyed tremendous success over the last 50 years. It's widely and successfully used for both AI and HPC, but the members of the Ultra Ethernet Consortium have a shared vision that we can make it even better. I'm here to tell you about that vision and highlight some key technical points of the Ultra Ethernet 1.0 spec. Now, the motivation for using Ethernet and IP really goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Ethernet is backed by an incredibly strong multi-vendor ecosystem of switches, NICs, hosts, test equipment, you name it. It's got a proven track record of continuous and rapid technology improvement across the board, from link speeds, protocols, to optics and cabling. Ethernet is universally deployed and understood. And with IP, it's proven to scale to arbitrarily large networks. These are essential properties that everyone wants their network to have. Now, ultra Ethernet is a suite of protocols and technologies that run on top of good old Ethernet and IP. We're not changing the core, but merely building on top of it to make it better for the needs of HPC and AI networks in the future. The most important deliverable of Ultra Ethernet isn't actually at the Ethernet layer. It's the specification of a new transport protocol that provides the ability to deliver data straight from the network and into application memory and vice versa, without software involvement, a capability known as RDMA. This protocol is called Ultra Ethernet Transport, or UET. It incorporates multiple elements that distinguish it from any RDMA protocol that precedes it. Foremost is its support for packet spraying, in which packets from a single transfer are carried over all the viable paths from source to destination. Now, packet spraying solves one of the most important problems that our target applications face in networks today, which is avoiding hotspots in the fabric that can occur due to imperfect load balancing of very large flows that these applications have. Now, with packet spraying, a challenge is that the packets can arrive in a different order from how they were sent. UET solves this by tagging packets so they can be delivered directly into application memory no matter what order they arrive in. Now, this is relatively easy, but the tricky part is to accurately and rapidly detect when packets are lost and which ones were lost in this out-of-order delivery world. To do this, UET leverages a powerful technology called packet trimming, which works like this. When a packet arrives at a congested switch, rather than dropping it, the packet is truncated, reducing its size by a factor of 64, and is placed into a higher priority queue. Now, this may sound counterintuitive, but it's actually brilliant because it simultaneously relieves the congestion and delivers a fast and precise signal as rapidly as possible to the receiver. Now, the trimmed packet lets the receiver both, one, slow down due to the congestion, and two, know exactly which packets need to be retransmitted. With high bandwidth HPC and AI traffic, we can't let the transport protocol slowly ramp its sending rate. It's critical to start off at wire rate because an entire transfer might only last a few round trip times. UET defines new sender and receiver based congestion control algorithms that enable this in a packet sprayed environment while also maintaining stability in the face of congestion. UET supports rapid connection startup, enabling data to in fact be transmitted before a handshake completes. Now this both optimizes performance for short transfers and minimizes state cost by letting idle connections get torn down without a restart penalty. Security is table stakes for UET applications, and UET provides end-to-end -end encryption and authentication, leveraging proven technologies like AES GCM, key derivation functions, and replay prevention. It notably adds a new group keying scheme for the group computations that are common to AI and HPC. Ultra Ethernet sits below the LibFabric 2.0 API that's standardized by the Open Fabrics Alliance. LibFabric is a modern API that directly supports operations used by HPC and AI applications like read, write, send, receive, group collectives, atomics, and tag messages. We expect many applications built on top of frameworks like PyTorch and CCLs to port to Ultra Ethernet with minimal or no changes. 
Libfabric interfaces to an Ultra Ethernet semantic messaging layer that provides new communication paradigms such as deferrable send and reliable datagrams for idempotent traffic. I encourage you to read about these in the spec. They're pretty neat. Ultra Ethernet is making extensions at the lower layers as well. We're standardizing two optional extensions that have already proven useful to some of our members in their HPC networks, namely link layer reliability and credit-based flow control. These technologies will now be available in standard Ultra Ethernet networks. In summary, we are super excited about our progress and the release of the 1.0 spec. That said, we are not stopping to rest on our laurels. Work is already underway on the future of Ultra Ethernet with many new ideas, including improved telemetry and congestion control, bindings for storage protocols, and in-network compute. We are tremendously excited for Ultra Ethernet as the path to the future for Ethernet-based AI and HPC networks. I encourage you to download the spec and read it, and then join the UEC so you can contribute your ideas and help us to define the future of networking for AI and HPC. Thank you.